Dr. Carl Mitchin has the night off. So with us tonight is Hans Grutenbaum. That's right, he hails from Germany. He's a Valkyrie warrior. Um, he actually had his tongue cut out, so he won't be talking tonight. But if he did talk, it'll be telepathically... <laughs> Telepathetically? Telepathetically through me. Yeah, that's what I will do, yeah. See? <laughs> that was awful. I'm sorry, that's not Hans. Alright, maybe it is. I can't beat my son in checkers. I don't know if it's I'm really bad or he's really good. My wife can either, though. Um, <clears throat> he's amazing. Like, I think I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good at chess. Like, I, I know strategy and how to, like see ahead into the future of a game and different moves and stuff like that, but I don't know what it is. Maybe it's his simplicity, the way he looks at the game, that makes him a better player. I don't know. It's sad. I am disappointed in myself that I can't play checkers. Or at least I'm not very good at playing checkers. It's fucking checkers. <laughs> For Christ's sake, I can't beat my seven-year-old son. I mean, good for him. I'm glad for him. I'm just disappointed in myself. My God, my phone is just lighting up tonight. I just decided to. Sh I decided to share uh, the road to forty again on Facebook. Um, like the last five or six videos, no one's even seen them yet. <laughs> Hopefully, they'll just catch on. Or even if they, I mean, even if they don't. That's not what it's all about. Anywho, um, yeah, so I think I'm going to start teaching him chess, because at least I'll be able to whip his ass for a little while and feel better about myself. <laughs> I love chess. I remember I learned to play chess. must have been about 94. Never had a, any desire to learn to play the game. Um, and I can't recommend it enough. Like, I don't play, I, I literally haven't played probably in seven or eight years, maybe more, maybe 10, 15 years. Um, I'd actually have to brush up on some of the rules just so I could remember, like, I know there's that thing with the, the, uh, castle. <laughs> yeah, I guess I would. Jeez Louise, man, that's sad. Sad and pathetic. Um, let's look at a few more of those questions we were going over last night. Uh, I felt like they led us places. Places that I was happy to go. Don't you agree? I, I was happy. I was very happy with last night's episode. Last night's episode was a turning point for me because I was seriously considering just doing them like once a week or something. I was just like, why am I doing these? Like, um, I just couldn't produce anything that was worthwhile, I guess. Where the hell are the bookmarks? Apparently they moved the bookmarks. Okay, here we go. Sample list of questions. We went over if you had godlike powers last night and I decided that... I would be nice to everybody, and <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if you had a chance to talk to anybody dead or alive, uh, we went over that one. Hmm. What's the most important invention of our time? Do you mean in my lifetime or within the last, like, hundred years? Because, I mean, the electric light bulb, electricity for that matter, brought to your house by the power company... Something seems sneaky about that, huh? You ever think about that? I wonder if there's a small-scale way of reproducing energy. Well, you got solar, obviously. I'm going to look into that. I'll invent it, and I'll supply it for free to everyone if I can come up with a good plan. <laughs> it sucks to have to pay for power, doesn't it? So, in, in a way... I mean, in all honesty, if I had to, if I had to definitively say something, I'd say the internet. It's something that I think came out to people, came out to the public, became available readily, very quickly, to every household in America. I think its original intent was probably for monitoring purposes and allowing people to connect and get news and stuff like that, and for companies to make money off of it, and government to make money off of it. I'm sure too. But, um, I think what they didn't realize, it also did it. It gave the people a voice, individuals, groups, a voice. And, um, it's, it, it's sad that it hasn't caught on for that purpose yet. <laughs> like, I mean, to a certain degree it has. There's a lot more, you know, social media, 
uh, allowing you to communicate with other people your ideas and beliefs. Damn, I am hot. I am just going to get down and dirty right now. No, I'm not. I'm just going to take this off because I'm sweating under these lights. Carol, I bet you Carol turned the heat on. I hate when she turns the heat on because we don't need the heat on. It's so hot. I'm dying. That's the only thing that sucks that we're polar opposite on is is temperature. Like, I would have it freezing in the house year-round. Like, that you had to bundle up. Or, in the summer, it's just like, oh, it is really cold in here. <laughs> is that a good example of how, when you walk into my house in the summer, I like it? Um, <laughs> that was silly. Anywho, yeah, the internet. It's just too bad that we haven't used it to take back our country or our world or, or whatever. You know what I mean? I don't know what I'm talking about half the time. Maybe I'm just wrong. If you were stranded on a desert island, it could only bring three things. What would you choose to bring and why? I think we've I think I've read this on here before because I already said three things that I wouldn't leave the house without me shouldn't count. Which is my you know, my my emergency bracelet that's got I think it's like two hundred and fifty feet of rope. Uh, that'll hold up to 200 pounds. I don't know if that's still the case, though. This has been through many showers, and, like, it's probably more brittle than when I first got it. And I also have this for a little uh, cordage if I needed it, too. Um, a knife, which I always have, a knife with a serrated, <coughs> partially serrated blade on it. And uh, a lighter. So I've got my fire. I've got my ability to, to make shelter and hunt necessarily if i had to i've just been on the survival kick lately i know i get on these sometimes but it just seems like it'd be a fun way to like it'd be nice to have a small house out in the middle of the woods with like a bed a fire like a little uh you know the little pot i pot belly uh, uh wrought iron stoves something like that they can cook on top or boil water on water on top bottle on top <laughs> um and running water would be really nice. <laughs> but besides that, like, it'd be fun to just venture off, like, a mile in this direction, two miles in this direction, especially if you had land all around you and, like, you could walk for miles. This hair is driving me crazy. I gotta either get it cut again or decide what the hell I'm gonna do because, because of the wonderful things he does. Anywho, yeah, I really wanted to talk about chess. Uh, Checkers getting my ass whipped tonight, but... <laughs> Uh, so what thing, three things would I bring with me? Um, hopefully I could find something to use as a toothbrush there. Like, I don't think that's something I would worry about. Hmm. Well, if I was near water, I would say goggles with a nose piece. And... I just had something on the tip of my tongue a pan or a pot or something to boil water on because without that you're you're just shit out of luck um, unless there's clean water around you which is not always the case and number three I don't know maybe a sleeping bag <laughs> or a pad of paper and a pencil yeah that's got to count as one come on <laughs> I don't know Imagine that. Imagine seriously finding yourself somewhere. Where would you like to be lost? Like a uh, tropical island where water, fresh water, is probably the hardest thing to find. You know, uh, the mountains, some beautiful mountain range somewhere where shelter and food could be issues if you don't know how to snare a trap or track. Um, well lot of beautiful places that you would think would be nice to get stuck in but once you get stuck there you shit out of luck i know from experience i've been all over lynchburg and uh <laughs> that's all the experience you're gonna need <coughs> i'm just kidding i know nothing john snow well i'm gonna wrap it up there um yeah those are the three things i would bring with me well i mean initially it would be some kind of bladed weapon uh, probably an axe, no, probably like a machete with a serrated piece to it. Um, first choice for, for if I had the ideal things that I would like. You know, 200 feet of, you know, 
300 pound test rope or something. <laughs> um, yeah, and some kind of actually a better fire starter that you know would work for years and years. A lighter is only going to last so long. Sure, you probably only have to use it for so long, but it depends if it's a long term survival situation. Why am I talking about this? Does anyone give a shit? <laughs> um, maybe my kids are watching this. It's 30 years in the future, and they're like, wow. Yeah, he was weird. <laughs> All right, you guys have a great night. If you're loving watching these like I'm loving making them, please subscribe and pass them along to anybody who you might know who might be interested in watching them. Uh, follow me on the Facebook, the Twitter, the uh, Instagram. It's just Jason everywhere you go, G-E-Y-C-E-N. That's the nice thing about having that unique spelling. Nobody has that name, so I always get first choice. Ello, go over Ello. I'm at Jason on Ello. <laughs> uh, don't forget to make somebody smile tomorrow. Please, think about it. <laughs> make yourself a better person tomorrow than you were today. Tomorrow. Why not? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Let's make the world spin a little bit happier together. Uh, I'm Jason Oliveira, hoping that all these leaked things from Episode 7 aren't true. <laughs> Alright, you guys have a great night. I'll see you a little bit further on down the road with hopefully some much better episodes. You guys have a great night. Bye.